Today's lecture is about the Earth atmosphere. Our learning goals are understanding the relationships between atmospheric pressure and altitude, explain the atmosphere composition, understand the atmosphere structure based on temperature, function, and composition, and finally list and describe natural and anthropogenic pollutants. The Earth's atmosphere is an extremely thin layer of air extending from the surface of the Earth to the edge of the space. The Earth is a sphere with a roughly an 8,000 mile diameter. The thickness of the atmosphere is about 60 miles. If you could take a picture from the spacecraft orbiting at 200 miles above the surface, you would see the atmosphere as the thin blue band between the surface and the blackness of the space. If the Earth were the size of the basketball, a thin layer of plastic wrapped around the ball could model the thickness of the atmosphere. Gravity holds the atmosphere to the Earth's surface. Without within the atmosphere, very complex chemical, thermodynamic and fluid dynamic effects occur. The atmosphere is not uniform. Fluid properties are constantly changed with time and location. We call this change the weather. The pressure of the air can be ruled by the weight of the air over a given location. If we increase altitude through the atmosphere, there is some air below us and some air above us, but there is always less air above us than was present at lower altitude. Therefore, air pressure decreases as we increase altitude. Overall, the atmospheric pressure that's defined by force per unit of area, so one kilogram per square centimeter of area at the sea level. So on average represents about 1000 hectopascal or 1000 millibar. This extreme pressure would crush us if our internal pressure didn't compensate it. So we'll talk about the gases in the atmosphere. Nitrogen and oxygen are by far the most common gases. Dry air is composed about 78% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen. Some other gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor and many other gases also are present in much lower variable amounts, which makes up less than 1% of the atmosphere. There are also so many small particles, solids and liquids floating in the atmosphere. These particles, which scientists call aerosols, include dust, spores and pollen, salt from sea spray, volcanic ash, smoke and much more. Some of the variable gases are also called greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. Greenhouse gas helps to trap heat in the atmosphere. Without it, our planet will be inhospitably cold. However, a great gradual increase in CO2 concentrations in Earth's atmosphere is helping to drive global warming threatening to disrupt our planet's climate as average global temperatures gradually rise. Levels of heat-trapping greenhouse gases in the atmosphere have reached another new record high, according to the World Meteorological Organization WMO. There is no sign of reversal in this trend, which is driving long-term climate change sea level rise, ocean acidification, and more extreme weather. The WMO showed that the global average concentration of carbon dioxide, the CO2, reached 416.5 parts per million on April 2019, from 410 parts, parts per million in 2018 and 406.8 parts per million in 2016. 
So since 1990, there has been a 41% increase in total radiative forcing, the warm effect on climate, by long-lived greenhouse gases. CO2 accounts for 82% of increase in radiative forcing over the past decade. So carbon dioxide is the fourth most abundant component on dry air. Carbon dioxide plays a key role in Earth's carbon cycle, the set of processes that cycle carbon in many forms throughout our environment. Volcanic outgases and wildfires are two significant natural sources of CO2 in Earth's atmosphere. Respiration, the process by which organisms liberate energy from food, emits carbon dioxide. So think about when you exhale, it's carbon dioxide, among other gases, that you breathe out. Another greenhouse gas, methane, is the second most important long-lived greenhouse gas and contributes about 17% of radiative forcing. Approximately 40% of methane is emitted into the atmosphere by natural sources, and about 60% comes from human activity, like cattle breeding, rice agriculture, fossil fuel exploitation, landfills, and biomass burning. Atmospheric methane reached a new height in about 1,866.1 parts per billion in 2019. It's now 257% of the pre-industrial level. Another gas is the nitrous oxide, N2O. is humid to the atmosphere for both natural, about 60%, and anthropogenic sources, approximately 40%, including oceans, soil biomass, burning, fertilizer use, and various industrial process. The atmospheric concentration in 2019 was 331.86 parts per billion. This is 122% of pre-industrial levels. This also plays an important role in the destruction of the stratospheric ozone layer, which protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. It accounts about 6% of radiative forcing by long-lived greenhouse gases. So think about the Earth sunscreens. So the, war the Earth is wrapped in layer of hair called the atmosphere. So good ozone is in the Earth after upper atmosphere, 10 to 30 miles above the surface. Life couldn't exist without this protective ozone, which also is called the ozone layer. So, the sun gives off light, heat and other type of radiation. Too much UV, the ultraviolet radiation, can cause skin cancer, cataracts and harm plants and animals. Ozone high, ozone high in the atmosphere absorbs or takes in some of the sun's harmful UV rays before they reach the ground, just the way sunscreens help us protect our skin from getting burned. Ozone up high works like the Earth sunscreens. But you have heard about the ozone hole, but it's not a hole. Although we say hole in the ozone layer or ozone hole, there is no actual hole. Instead, the protective layer contains less good ozone than it used to. The thinning is found all over the Earth, but the biggest loses are over the North and South Poles. That's because ozone destruction is worse when it is very cold. The trouble of ozone destruction starts when certain chemicals using air conditioners, fire extinguishers, insulate foams and solvents are let out during use. These chemicals eventually reach the upper atmosphere and are broken down by the sun's radiation, releasing chlorine and bromine atoms. These atoms take away one of the oxygen atoms from the ozone and use them to make other substances. Chlorine and bromine atoms are catalytic, 
means they can speed up a chemical reaction without changing and can repeat the destructive cycle again with another ozone molecule. So one chloride or bromine atom can destroy thousands and thousands of ozone molecules, causing ozone to disappear much faster than nature can replace it. So people also often confuse the ozone hole with global warming. But they are two different problems. 